Hello everyone, welcome to a very special video. It's a DSP video as you guessed it. And uh instead of me just sitting here and watch and watching him, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw stuff and you're gonna see me draw stuff as I'm watching this and re reacting to this for the first time I'm watching this. So you get to watch me watch this for the very first time. Uh I finally fixed this issue I had with OBS. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I've been trying to get it to work for a while because I didn't, I refused to, um, record me just watching him and not do something. I wanted to draw and I wanted to watch him at the same time. So, there you go. So let's get the party started. Alright, hello everyone. Dark Side Phil here with a special update video for everyone. And, uh, you know, normally I don't do this kind of video, but about a week ago... Uh, I had to. I had to make a video uh, that was pretty much one of the most, if not the most important video that I had ever I made had to make it. in regards to myself and my YouTube career at that time because some really unforeseen things were happening in regards to this channel right here, DSP Gaming on YouTube, um, as well as some other stuff. Uh, basically, my partner network, Machinima, who I have been with, as a partner since 2011 and as a managed partner since late 2013, uh, said that they were going to renegotiate my too. contract. And uh, being that that was the case, uh, after getting more information, unfortunately, I found out it was going to be quite a large pay cut for me. Um, Wait a second. And, you know, that's a big decision. That's Wait a second. A big okay. He said on Twitter uh, that... Oh, Machina has been great to me. This this uh, has been a very fair deal. This pay cut is fair. The contract that he just gave me is a fair deal. And now he's saying, "Oh, it's a big cut. It's a and 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 also before you even get excited that oh oh let's comment on this." He has turned off comments. You can't you can't uh, comment. You can't give him your two cents. You can't like or dislike the video. So uh, there you go. Um, I just don't get the logic of saying that he can't afford things and that this that this contract is a severe pay cut but then he said it's a fair pay cut so which is it Phil or DSP are you getting uh you know are you getting less money or are you not I mean you can't say that I'm getting a pay cut that's going to hurt my channel and then say this is a fair deal if it's hurting your channel it isn't a fair deal unless you think it's fair that that machine was paying you for less. Which at that point you're kind of agreeing with the detractors then, because some of the detractors think that you shouldn't be making as much as you were, or or whatever. But yeah, you make up your mind. Decision for someone like me or anyone on YouTube to make. If you're a YouTuber and this is your income, this is your bread and butter, this is what pays the bills, this isn't just some side project that you're doing, right? For me, this has been my full-time job since 2011. <laughs> it's okay. a really tough decision to make to decide whether or not uh, you're going to accept uh, something like that or even to just accept the fact that you're going to have a decrease in pay, right? Now, for me, unfortunately, it was kind of really bad timing because as many of you know who've watched my videos and, and everything that's been going on with me and my channels this year, I had a lot of malicious activities around myself, including false copyright strikes that forced my channel to fall out of the YouTube rankings and literally fall out of related videos and YouTube search for two months. And when that happened, my views plummeted because I wasn't getting those related views and things like that from YouTube search. It was just basically a core fan base of people coming back, which was great. It's my lifeblood and it definitely allowed me to keep doing business, but I lost a lot of money just because of false copyright strikes. Okay. So okay. when I got this news a week ago, I was pretty disheartened, admittedly. I was pretty disheartened. I was shocked. I was like, man, this is coming out of nowhere. The same thing happened to me in 2012. Machinima contacted me at that point and also did a contract renegotiation. That contract renegotiation was nowhere near as bad or as, le as bad of a negative impact as this one's going to have on me. Okay? But you just said, oh so my god. So basically Machinima Sorry, gave me a, a new offer for contract and gave me a whopping uh, 10 days to action on this contract. It said, if you don't action on this contract within 10 days, you are going to be released from your contract, and that'll be it. No more relationship between you and Machinima for DSP Gaming. And I looked at it, I was like, wow, you know, this is a big thing, a big decision for me. What am I going to do? You know, is it, is, it, is, it, 
is it viable to keep YouTube going? Um, can I keep going the way that I am? Being being the fact, you know, that I'm a realist and a that realist. I know that for the past several years this business has had a decline, right? A realist. I'm one of the very few YouTubers out there who still just does raw gameplay throughs, right? Most other YouTubers have moved on to highly edited content, polished content, abridged things, best ofs, t countdowns, and things like that. What other, you know, there, there's very few YouTubers who will do from start to finish a video game without any kind of editing or anything like that, right? And I know that. I know that I'm kind of still adhering to that old formula. And there's lots of people that like that, but is it going to sustain a business in the future, right? So after I got this news that my contract was going to be renegotiated and I was going to be making way less money if uh, I stayed with Machinima and knowing that I only had 10 days to make a decision, all right? I implemented two things last week. I made a very special video that I uploaded right here to DSP Gaming. Thank you to everyone who checked it out. Over 30,000 people watched the video within the week. I haven't even looked at the video recently, so I have no idea how many views it actually has now. But lots of people checked out the video, so obviously it means lots of people this have some kind of a vested up. interest in myself and my future here on YouTube and are interested to know what's going to happen. That's me. So, that. basically the things that were on the table for me that were uncertain. Number one, did I want to stay with Machinima or not? Because I could leave Machinima. I could go with another partnership network. And what I needed to do was talk to other partnership networks to find out what they were offering, okay, and see if anyone would give me a better deal than what Machinima was offering me at the time as this, this renegotiation is happening. Um, number two, I wanted to see if I could have more time because 10 days is a short amount of time. The bottom line is 10 days to figure out your entire financial future and the future of a business is not enough. Like, I need to, to go out there and play the field and talk to other companies and let people know that I am a free agent and I'm looking to possibly get a better deal than what I have now, right? And only having 10 days, that was kind of ridiculous in my opinion, okay? And number three, I need to come up with a new strategy because I realized that things were getting stale and stagnant and people didn't just like the unedited game playthroughs anymore. And I came up with a three-pronged, oh God, I'm saying it again, a three-pronged strategy for success. And all of this information That's was the wrong word to use. Three prongs is like a little bit a plug over a week ago. It was actually, I think it was like uh, like December 9th or something. And today is, I think, December 16th. Oh, think so it might have been December 8th. Right now. Roughly a week ago, I made this video, okay? <clears throat> Man. So the reason I'm making a video right now for all of you is, number one, to give you a major update because I have a major update regarding the status of DSP Gaming. I have a major update regarding the status of the new channel that's part of my three-pronged strategy for success in 2016. And I want to address some controversy. And for the first time ever, controversy. it's not controversy about me. It's actually controversy about the whole situation with partnership networks and there's this thing that just happened a day or two ago, and people are, are like messaging me about it. Phil, do you know about this? And I want to address it because at this point, this thing happens every year or two, and, and people ask me, and I, oh, you know, I'm finally gonna like publicly address it so everyone understands my position. Okay. About so what? first of all, let's talk about DSP gaming. All right, what's gonna happen with DSP gaming? What is the this controversy? Right I don't get this controversy. Here? As I uh, said in my three pronged strategy last week, this channel will remain your destination source for unedited gameplay footage and ongoing gameplay coverage of games. This is not gonna be a channel that's gonna change to do vlogging or to do uh, edited content. It's just gonna be the raw gameplay footage, pretty much like it always has been. All right. So in 2016, this place really isn't gonna change that much. If anything, the only thing that'll change is that. There's going to be a little bit less gameplay coverage. And what I mean by that is I'm going to focus only once a day usually on gameplay content. It's going to be around four hours of gameplay. Therefore, instead of the four to five hours that I'm putting out now, it's only going to be around four hours or so a day. All right. And I am going to try to pick and choose games more carefully so I don't get inundated with so much that I don't get around to playing the games in a timely manner. I worked on that a little bit in 2015. I think I did a good job of it. Right now, it's like the worst time for me because I'm playing four games, even though I tried to avoid it. It is what it is. In 2016, it's going to be even more refined than that, all right? But the problem was, this is the, the channel that Machinima was renegotiating for. So they were saying, you're going to make way less money on this channel, okay? Uh, here's our new offer. You have 10 days to sign. Oh, and by the way, there's a clause in this contract that was not in a previous Machinima contract. I've read the other contracts, and they didn't have this clause. It's some kind of a new clause since the last time that I signed with Machinima. And what this clause stated was that I would basically be in a non-compete uh, contract where I would not be able to have any other associations with other partnership networks. So that means if I made this new channel, as I stated in last week's video, where I did edited content and countdowns and reviews and all that stuff went on that channel, I wouldn't be able to have that with a, a, another company outside of Machinima. 
Of and course. for me, that was almost like the deal breaker because here's the thing: even regardless of what I did. With okay, I'm sorry, but how many YouTubers who are who are partners do you know are partnered with two different companies? I don't know a lot of of of. The only thing I could think of is that if someone, if he were to open another uh, uh, channel that was like, okay, this is my game, and then this is like animation or something, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm a pro at this or that I know what he's talking about, but it just it, it just sounds kind of ridiculous. And wasn't his original plan to also pitch this third channel to Machinima? He dr name dropped Machinima so many times, and then when he got the I guess when he got the um, the renegotiation, I guess he, he he felt that he wasn't gonna get the um, the money. DSP Gaming. Let's say that I decided that DSP Gaming was to stay with Machinima because that's the best option. But Machinima decides that this new channel is too new. They either don't want to partner or if they partner it, they want to give me way worse terms than what I have on DSP Gaming or even worse, they don't want to make it a managed partnership. Well, so yeah, that because it's a third now channel. Is risk of having content ID matches and copyright strikes and when all that hits, I basically have nowhere to go for help. That would be a disaster, right? And I would want Why doesn't he I said this so many times in the past, at least I think I did. He could just Keep do it all on this channel. I mean, he he could just change so many things. Like he could make his videos longer instead of cutting them to twenty minute bits parts, so that you know whatever you can keep it into like you know maybe six hour segments or something. Keep all that stuff in the same runtime. Upload that as a whole playthrough, and then upload like uh. Edited parts at the end of the week or something, you know, keep it all um, sequential and, and into it, you know, in order. He doesn't have to upload each video individually. And he could also, um, and then he could just make a playlist for these edited uh, videos. He doesn't need to make another channel. And if anything, doing it all in one channel would probably increase his revenue stream because he not only would he keep, keep getting views of people who like this long edited. His no edited video content content he could do that and then get the money get the views of the other stuff I mean opening a third channel is an awful idea it's awful no one can run three channels I mean the only time I get I can understand two channels everyone kind of craps on people having two channels but I can I can honestly uh, understand two channels you should have at least two channels that should be the maximum but having uh, you know, three channels, that, that's a little overkill. I mean, I have two channels myself. But that's mostly because I don't want my main channel to be flooded with DSP stuff. I kind of want my, my YouTube channel just to be something for anyone just to kind of come in and see my work. I don't want them to see this guy in my video, in my video feed. I do have a playlist for DSP videos as well, but I haven't been updating that. But that's just me. I, I like having those two channels. Two channels I can understand, but, but... Three, uh, uh, I want to have the ability to take this new channel and partner it with whoever I want. Because the bottom line is I have been talking with companies for the past week, and there are companies that are telling me, Phil, we will right now, we will partner DSP Gaming, we will partner your new channel, we'll make them both managed partnerships. All right. The only reason that I haven't jumped ship immediately from Machinima the second I heard that is because all these companies are offering me less than what Machinima has offered me in this renegotiated contract. Yeah, so even though Machinima is offering me way less than what I'm making now, these other companies are offering even less than that. So it's like make even less money to be guarantee a managed partnership, but you're taking a risk because you're jumping to a totally new company that you don't really know that well, or stay with Machinima. Get the money that they're offering you, but have an uncertainty regarding this new channel, all right? So all this was kind of going through my head this past week. So in regards to all of that, here's the big update, all right? I talked with Machinima this past week. I explained the situation to them. I made, let them know that, number one, I don't think 10 days to figure all this out is enough. And I think it's really, quite, quite honestly, kind of unprofessional to force someone like me, where my business, my entire livelihood is based off of YouTube, to make a decision, a, a de-jerk decision in 10 days. So I asked for more time. I said, can I please have more time because there's no way that I can decide in 10 days. I can't give you a legitimate answer. So you're basically what you're telling me is you're forcing me out of machinima if this is going to stand. Okay. So that was number one. Number two, 
I said, what about my new channel when I make it? Because it has to be part of my business strategy for 2016. It just has to be. It seems like I've gotten overwhelming feedback from everyone from the video that I put out last week saying, yes, this is a great strategy. Vlogging here, raw gameplay here, edited content here seems like success, right? And tons of people what? have already said, Phil, we don't have time to watch all of your edited or your unedited gameplay content, but we would love a channel where it's all edited and it's only a few videos. Why and we can just, subscribe uh, to that in a heartbeat and watch all uh, the videos there. So... Seems to me like the whole idea is going to work out, okay? <clears throat> so I explained this to Machinima. I said, how can I resign with you when you're putting me in a not-compete clause and you're not committing to saying that my new channel will be a managed partnership, right? We need to work this out for me to resign. So I went back and forth with Machinima a lot this week. I'm going to, I'm going to make a prediction. Machinima being the weak, weak need people they are, I'm sorry, the, this guy has probably... Uh, broke so many terms of services with them, and they don't give a shit. This guy can can you can argue that he can tone bullying, cyber bullying. You can, you can argue that, and Machinima didn't do anything about it. This guy has been constantly ripping off his fans. They didn't deliver anything, on, you know, from his Patreon perks. But I, I get that that's not Machinima's uh, jurisdiction there. But I don't think a a company other than Machinima. Would would have kept this guy on their payroll. I don't. I the views he gets are chump change, and I don't see Machinima keeping him. I don't know why Machinima is keeping him. So I'm predicting that Machinima bent over for him and was like, "Oh yeah, sure, Phil, we'll do whatever you say." Since you since you use you know since you keep talking keep talking to us or something. It's almost as if Phil is this crybaby of Machinima, and Machinima is just. Giving him all this stuff so he can shut up. Because I think mean, that's what's going on. That he probably emails them every day, annoys the fuck out of them, and then Machinima's like, hey, you know, this guy's really bothering us. Uh, why don't we just give him what he wants? Because he's just, he's never going to shut up. I don't know. I don't know. I, that, that's how it feels. Like. It feels like they're, they're just bending over for him because they just don't want to deal with him anymore. I don't know. All right. And... Admittedly, I was worried because it's a lot to ask of a car partnership company. And let's face it, I'm certainly not the biggest machine I'm a partner. Are you fucking kidding me? No way. They've got way bigger partners than me now. I'm kind of, if anything, if you look in the range of YouTube success for gamers, maybe middle range, if that. You know what I mean? I, there's a lot of people bigger than me, but there's tons of people smaller than me, so I'm kind of middle range. So. I don't really have a lot of clout when it comes to negotiating with Machinima, okay? So I didn't know if they were going to go for anything. To my surprise, all right, Machinima was incredibly understanding. They worked with me through my issues, and here's what they offered me. I cannot tell you specifics, but they basically have now put me into a contract here on DSP Gaming. That unlike the other contract, which was going to be for a year-long locked in at this lower rate of, of pay that I was going to get for everything here on DSP Gaming. They went out of their way and said, well, since you're in a unique position... Right? It's make or break for you. We're going to give you a limited time. Well, we don't offer this to everyone. A two-month contract. All right? Two the contract months. will start as of December 1st, ends at the end of January. So what you basically have is a two-month trial period where you're going to have the, your GSP gaming channel under this new agreement with us. And you're going to see how much money you're actually going to make month to month now with the new agreement. During that period of time, you are free to go out and talk to any other company and see what other companies will offer you. And if anyone could do better than us, go right ahead. You know, we can't stop you. But we're willing to do a limited time two-month contract so that way you can sign it out, at least have income for two months, right? Not get locked into a long-term contract for a year and get stuck with us if you don't like what we're offering you, okay? That was crazy. Like, when they told me that, I was like, that's crazy. I didn't, never thought they were going to offer me that. I literally thought they were going to say, sign now for a year or too bad, hit the road, Jack. And they didn't. They went out of their way and negotiated a much smaller contract for me so that I have a, a little bit of leeway in the month of January to see how the things go with DS. More than that, now I'm listening to this, Machinima is really like his mom. It's Mama Machinima at this point, because Machinima is, is babying him at this point. That contract sounds like they're like, you know, they gave him these two months so they could get his shit together and either find a better company, okay, or get a job. That's really what Mission is, is telling him is, hey, we will, you know, during this these two months, sounds like you're 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 stretched. You know, they're probably hoping he gets a job during these two months, not knowing that this is DSP, 
and then you know he'll be he'll be set, and then he'll he'll be able to sign on with their shitty contract that they're giving him. But you know, again, it's Phil. He's, he probably just like, "Well, this is going to be great, and I'm going to be able to do things." See, Mishima's great, and really, Mishima's is giving him. Um, it's kind of like that guy. Like you have a, you have that friend, that one friend who is like unemployed, and he's in between jobs, and he's trying to get a job, but. You know, he, he, he's kind of like a slacker, so he so you kind of let him stay in your house for a while. Then you're like, hey, man, you know, I feel sorry for you. You can stay here for two months. That way you have a roof over your head, and you can get your shit together. That's basically what Machinima is doing to this guy. He, he's basically, he's a bum at this point. He's a Machinima bum. Mama Machinima to the rescue. Gaming, how do things go with the new channel? How do things go with the more active vlogging? And kind of make a decision for myself. So number one, that was huge. And even though this new contract is going to mean less money for me, uh, I decided that at least for the two-month trial run, this is the way to go. I mean, if it doesn't work out at the end of January, here's the thing. Here's the other thing that they said. Normally, if you're in a contract with Machinima, all right, you have to cancel that contract or notify them you want to be out of that contract within 60 days of the end of the contract. So, for example, right now, today, I sign a one-year contract with Machinima. I would have to tell them two months before the end of the year, so that's what sometime in October, that I want to end my contract with them so that we can end it by the end of 20, uh, 2016, I guess it would be, right? Um, they gave me a now amended terms, three days. So if three days before the end of January I've decided this whole experiment didn't work out and I want to say goodbye to Machinima, I can say goodbye. So pretty good, right? I mean, that's they're basically giving me control of my destiny. And that's what destiny. I want. And that's what ultimately what I was worried about is the control is being taken away from me and given to another to a company, to Machinima, basically. And they understood and they completely changed the contract for me and said, here you go. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like, if that doesn't show you that a company has appreciated my loyalty to them over the past four plus years, I mean, that's awesome that they went out of their way. All right. So the good news is in regards to DSP Gaming, I'm on a trial basis now with this new contract. Nothing's going to change. I'm still in a managed partnership. I still have all the protections I used to have. I still have all the, 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 the help that I need from them if anything goes wrong. Everything's still there in place. And the only difference is I'm going to be making some less money. But... That was going to happen no matter what. And like I said, out of all the, the offers that I've received over the past week, because I've gotten three different partnership companies who contacted me, every one offered me less than what Machinima was offering in this new contract. So I was like, okay, so let's do it and let's see what happens. So the good news is for right now, DSP Gaming is good till the end of January. Near the end of January, I'll evaluate how everything went and then we'll go from there. Okay. Now, the other big piece of data here. The new channel, which I still don't have a name for it yet. I have, an, I have some ideas, but this new channel, that this channel is going to be created solely for edited content. Game reviews, the Hateful Truth game reviews are going to move over there. Countdowns, special series, all that kind of stuff, all the edited style content. Best of, worst of, I'm probably going to have the best of the week, worst of the week, stuff like that every week. Um, all that is going to be on the new channel, and that channel is only going to have a few new videos a week, maybe two, three videos tops a week, and that way... No overload. You can subscribe to the channel and not get 5,000 fucking videos in your inbox. Right? Good stuff. And for those who don't have the time to watch all the gameplay videos here on DSP Gaming, that's your place to go. Okay? What about that channel? Well, I talked to Machinima about that, and I said, you know, I'm very wary of signing or re-signing anything with you because you've got this non-compete clause in your contract saying, what if I re-sign DSP Gaming, but we can't come to terms on this new channel? Uh, you know, what am I going to do? Because it's critical. It's part of my new success for 2016. I'm going to have to use this new channel. Not only, get this, Machinima first of all comes back and says, yes, we have the non-compete clause in the contract, but being that you're such a long-standing, you know, oh partner, God. the fact that your main Machinima channel is staying with us, guy. we would never enforce it. Like, we would never come after you legally. And I have this in writing, by the way. It wasn't like they made this shit up. They made, I have it in writing, so legally it stands. We would never come after you. Why would we? Why would we try to sue you because you have a secondary channel that we couldn't even, you know, come to your terms for partnership with the channel? Wow. You go elsewhere to partner. There's no way we would come after you. For that. Wow. So I was like, wow. So again, so not only are they renegotiating my DSP gaming contract to give me flexibility and control, you, now they're Shima. telling me you're going to have total control over this new channel regardless of who you partnership, uh, who you partner it with. All right. And then today, the best part of, of of good news came through, and that's why I was waiting until today to give you guys this this update. Machinima came back again in writing and said, we will partner your new channel 
and we will make it a managed partnership. Of course, keep in mind, it's going to be under the same terms and conditions as all managed partnerships. So if I do malicious shit and I steal video clips from other people and, and you use use copyrighted music that I am not don't have rights to use on that channel and it all gets claimed and I get in trouble, then I'm going to lose that managed partnership. But they said, yeah, we're willing to give you a managed partnership on that channel. It's, it, it, you know, not that big of a deal, you know, especially because you're staying with us for DSP Gaming, at least in the short term. We're willing to do that for you. Now, we haven't hashed out specifics as to income and all that. I've got to believe that they're going to give me a contract that at least is close to what's on DSP Gaming. If not, it'll be similar to what's over on the King of Hate Vlogs, my vlogging channel, in which case either one is fine with me. Either you know, As long as it's close to what I'm making on either of those channels, it's not that big of a deal. It's not for me, quite honestly. This new channel, whatever it ends up being called, is not about the money. It's about getting new interest, getting new people over to watch my stuff. Because the bottom line is the more people who watch my stuff on any channel, it's going to overall affect me positively. So if I can get a whole new viewer base over there on this new channel watching the edited stuff, that's going to naturally trickle to the vlogs and trickle to the the raw gameplay. You know what I mean? It's all going to work out. So just to recap... Until they know who Not you are. Not only did Machinima give me really awesome terms as it comes to a short-term contract for DSP Gaming so that I have full control over my destiny of DSP Gaming and everything else, they then said they would not in, uh, enforce a non-compete clause for this new channel. And then they said, yes, they're going to make this new channel a managed partnership. We don't have a come uh, to terms yet exactly. Wow, well, I knew. I don't really Holy care shit, much, I predicted honest. this. But basically, they're giving me right. everything I want. Wow. Well, literally, Machinima's like, we're giving you everything. It took about a week for us to go back and forth to hash it out. But they're giving me everything I want. Mama Machinima. So, thumbs up. So here's the bottom line. Here's where we are right now. Right now, DSP Gaming is good. Right now, I'm in the process of creating this new YouTube channel. I'm trying to brainstorm what the name of this new channel will be. And once I have that, in early 2016, we're talking the one to two weeks into January, I'm going to start utilizing that channel to post up videos, edited videos, reviews. By then, I'll probably have finished Fallout 4. By then, I'll probably uh, have an idea of what kind of stuff that I want to maybe start off with on that journey. The best moments of Fallout 4, I could do a montage of it, right? Stuff like that. So that's the kind of stuff. And I'm going to start it strong. I'm going to have it, uh, you know, go up over there. And <clears throat> once all that's in set, you know, partner it with Machinima around the same time, and we're good to go. So that's the plan right now. Right now, it's business as usual. DSP Gaming is good. I'm going to move forward positively, keep doing the same thing I'm doing, playing the games that I'm playing right now. Keep in mind, next week's... Christmas, holiday special coming up, all kinds of fun stuff, fan appreciation, year-end series, all coming on DSP Gaming in the next couple of weeks. And then once that's done, we move to the new strategy where there'll be raw new gameplay here on DSP Gaming. There'll be the edited stuff on the new channel, and the vlogging channel will have way more content for you, almost you know, a several times a week versus just the one or two videos I put there a week because that's going to be a new strategy. I explained all this in the video last week, so check that out if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, So, it's all good news, right? It's all good. The one thing that I really need from everyone right now, all right, first of all, do all the things I suggested in the last video last week to support me. Watch the videos, spread the word, please continue to stay out of drama. You guys have done a great job this week. I've heard almost no drama whatsoever in regards to are myself, you? my co- nothing, mm-hmm. it's just people are watching, people are enjoying, people are having fun, being positive on social media, and I'm not hearing any kind of negative bullshit, people are not getting caught up in the drama of nonsense, of sh- the, the stupid slanderous shit throwing that people do about me, and I'm out of it too, because uh, since you don't talk about it, I don't hear about it, and it's been a good week for me, so thank you in regards to that, it's been a great week, please continue to do so, alright? And of course, Patreon is going to help to make sure that with this pay cut that I'm taking, that I can still afford to pay my bills. So, patreon.com forward slash darkside filled the... Yeah, there's no, there's no drama at all, because his fans aren't talking about it, and, uh, and he's not noticing the drama at all. There's no drama. No one is caught up in the drama. I wonder why. I wonder why there's no tra- drama. I, I really... I, hmm... New goal for this month is up, Rockathon 2.0. People loved the Rock Band Marathon. I did so much well, last time. That okay, is this is again. this is some bullshit. Month. Okay, I got sorry. I got I gotta stop here to say this about Rock Band. He said when he did the first Rock Band, this has to be said. The first, the point of the first Rock Band being behind the Patreon paywall is because he was afraid that he was gonna get an idea and he wouldn't be able to make money off it and you know whatever. Okay. All right, I, I guess I can, I can understand that. Now he hasn't got any strikes. He hasn't got any issues from the Rockathon, and he's doing the, he's gonna do it the usual way of any other game playthrough, just doing it you know each you know, twenty minute video, or whatever. 
but he's still hiding behind a paywall for no reason. He's literally hiding content behind a paywall now. Something he said he never does. He's doing it. Wow. Dollars or more this month, you get to nominate the songs I'll be playing and singing in that wow. marathon at the end of January. Okay? So, those are the ways you can help me. All right? But in addition to all of that, I still need your help. I need, really, at this point, concrete and good suggestions for this new channel. Because I really need a good name, a catchy name, that has nothing, and I'm going to say this again because people didn't seem to understand when I said it last week. This channel could have nothing to do in the title with DSP, Dark Side Phil, um, <laughs> like King of Hate, none of that. I want it to be something different. So, so, so he doesn't want any D anything to do with him, but he's going to be doing the 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 channel. So is he is he going to have someone else do the narration or something? Like, like people are going to figure out. It seems he's going to get rid of the DSP water uh, watermark on the, at the bottom of his videos. He's not really thinking this this out. That well, you're not really thinking anything through, but that's it's DSP, so there you go. It's it's Something branded completely differently. So that way, just immediately at the name, you don't know obviously that has anything to do with me. When people type in the name of this channel, they're not gonna get five million slanderous videos from people of from over the years with all these videos about nasty shit about me that has nothing to fucking do with me or my video content. I want, want it to people be a fresh start. Them. Okay, and some people have said, well, Phil, you realize that those people who are nasty to you were going to follow. No shit. I mean, of course they are. But just getting a fresh start in the YouTube search engine is a, be is a huge, better, positive start than what I have now with DSP Gaming. Okay, so any yeah. suggestions, just with the ideas that I've given you, countdowns, top tens, best of the week, best of moments, worst like of he, moments. He's, of he's treating it as if it's like a game uh, or something you know, that you can't really like tweet back to someone like, Kojima could make another game similar to that doesn't have a name on it and you wouldn't know it was channel. Kojima. What do you think? And again, stay away from DSP, but, stay away uh, from Phil, stay away from Dark Side, stay away from King of Hate, all those things that are associated with me. I gotta try to make it different than those. Alright? So please send me your suggestions. <clears throat> well... Wow. Again, you're gonna know so he's saying that he doesn't want people to say it. so like he wants to change it so that people say don't go see Dark Side Phil, don't see King of Hate and all that. They're gonna see his montage channel that's called something else and they're gonna be like, Oh, this isn't DSP. Okay, I'm gonna watch this. And again, if he doesn't get rid of the DSP watermark that's gonna be on the bottom of his videos, they're gonna be like, Oh, that's the DSP watermark. Okay, this is the guy that fuck this guy. And also the other thing is that haters aren't idiots. Yeah, the haters are gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna get to his new channel and plaster that shit, and the, and your the amount of attention that the haters have on DSP gaming they've had before the copyright tricks and all that shit is gonna carry over, Phil. Starting a new channel isn't gonna help the detractor problem. The, the way to help the detractor problem would be not to be an asshole, but you're never gonna stop. You can't stop being an asshole. What is all the crap is disabled on this video because I want people to watch this video at face value and not be distracted. I want you to get the message rather than, oh, it's in the comments, all thumbs down, and people saying nasty shit. No. And that's why it's all disabled. Send me an email, darksidephilahotmail.com. Tweet me, at they call me DSP. There's m many public ways that you can do. Pu post it up on my forums, thekingofhate.com, anywhere. Give me your suggestions <clears throat> for this new channel because I need to make it and name it very shortly, okay? Now... The final I really portion of this video, not I want to address controversy. In particular, going on right now, it's like literally just happening, but it's been going on for years, regarding Machinima. Because as I was during this renegotiation this past week, okay, for what's going on with Machinima, which by the way, I just want to remind everyone, I'm only in a two-month contract with them on DSP Gaming that I can leave at the end of January. So worst comes to worst, if something changes and Machinima totally does a flip-flop on me and acts like a bunch of jerks, I can leave them at the end of January, Okay. I'm not locked into anything right now. And that's why I was so happy they gave me that flexibility. But there's all this negativity around Machinima right now because, again, this comes up every few years. Apparently, there's Machinima partners out there, people who are partnered with Machinima, who have contracts that are kind of ridiculous, contracts that have pretty ridiculous terms and, and things that just don't really make much sense compared to what other people have on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of people saying that they're trying to get out of their contracts with Machinima and Machinima won't let them out or just doesn't respond. A lot of information. And here's the bottom line, everyone. 
I've heard tons of negative stuff about Machinima over the years. Tons. That they do underhanded things here and He's not going to talk shit on Machinima. He, this is going to be him sucking their dick because why would he talk shit on them in the same video where Machinima basically bent over for him? I mean, if now if, if this would play out differently where Machinima said no, this would be a different segment. I just want to make that clear. This guy who claims he's not biased has, right now, he gives me no, no uh, reason to believe that what he's about to say is not biased at all. It's severely biased. There. That they screw this YouTuber over here and there. And I hear it all here saying, people say it, say it, say it, or whatever. All that I can ever attest to is my personal experience, right? There's always he said and she said and this guy said and that guy said and that's all hearsay. That's all part of the big cloud of drama nastiness that YouTube loves to prolificate rather than actually focus on personal experiences that are positive. Because the bottom line is this, for every million people that have a positive experience with something, there'll be the one guy who has a bad experience and that guy will scream the loudest and that's the guy that gets the attention because of drama. The human interest in drama and, and attention and negativity. They love. I I really want whoever is the Machinima, pe you know, people who are getting screwed over by Machinima. I want them to watch this part, and I want them to to, to react to to DSP and see how happy they are. I, I want to see how much they, they agree with him and all that, and they're and and fans of that person, because I I could I'm gonna tell you right now I wouldn't be if, if I was in his position, in his position. I wouldn't at all talk about other Machinima partners right now. I would just say that's none of my business and end it. This should have been over 10 minutes ago. Because he shouldn't be talking about other people's experiences with Machinima. And he shouldn't be... And, you know, he, he, he hates how people are slandering him. He's slandering these people. They're, he's saying that all these people love drama and this and that. But these people who are complaining about Machinima are complaining about Machinima. He... Just complain. I just saw this. I, I just realized. He he said that Machinima gave him unrealistic terms with these 10-day stuff. Gave him a, said a lot of things that was like, this is ridiculous. This is almost unprofessional. And now he's saying that these people who are having worse experiences are doing it for drama. A man who has drama in his in his t title did multiple trauma drama videos in 2015 alone. I've never seen him do th this amount of tra of drama videos in a year before. He talked about it, sure, but he never did these type of videos before, as far as I as far as I know. This is the most ridiculous fucking video I've ever seen. This guy should be ashamed of himself for this video. I mean, there's other videos he should be definitely ashamed of. That's the king for, you know, a huge example for that. But this... If I was a Machinima partner and I had problems with Machinima and I saw this, I, I would probably be pretty irate with him right now. I'd probably be on Twitter right now shitting on him or emailing him saying, Hey man, I'm not doing this for fucking drama. This is serious and this has happened to me. And this is why Machinima is a piece of shit, or whatever. Not, well, these, oh, okay, let's continue. But they follow it. Why do you think we have reality TV shows? Why do you think TMZ is so popular? Because people fucking love their drama. So I'm sure, yes, there are probably very much people with the Machinima contracts they don't like. People who want to get out of their contracts, and maybe they can't. All this negative stuff going on. But all I can tell you is from my personal experience. And here's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. But you just Since said the that they're all doing for drama, like though. All right? You don't know their experience. I've Why are you saying that they're doing it for drama? I've had a positive experience with them than I've had a negative. I could be very honest with you, because I'm an honest guy. You know me. <laughs> what do oh, I like about man. Machinima? Make it, make I like the laugh. fact that I have one to two people oh, in the company man. that I can contact, whether whether it is a direct phone call or an email, or if I have to go through their silly automated uh, system that they call Zendesk. It's like a log system to show that they actually actioned on request. I still get an answer from Machinima within roughly 24 hours every single time I've ever submitted something legitimately into their system. Now, I don't know if that's just me, but I usually get a response. I've almost never had a situation where no one was responding to me, okay? I like the fact that Machinima gives me things outside of just my partnership. They give me music. 
royalty-free music that I can use in all my edited videos. They give me protections against copyright. All these false copyright strikes I had this year, they helped me to get them cleared up. They talked directly with YouTube. They got my streaming capabilities back when the streaming got suspended. I like the fact that I'm in a managed partnership. Now, admittedly, not everyone has that. But the fact that I'm in a managed partnership means that I don't have content ID flags and all these third-party fucking companies flagging my videos and me losing the ability to monetize my hard-earned work, right? My, my, my work that I'm, my blood, sweat, and tears is the one that I'm the one playing the game. I'm the one recording. I'm the one uploading. I'm the one babysitting the videos, putting the videos in Baby playlists, promoting videos. the videos, telling everyone about it, setting up the live stream. That's me. No one deserves credit for that but me. So there you have it. You know, that's for me to get credit for that. And having that managed partnership protection is outstanding. Machinima allowed me to go to E3 in 2012. Now, admittedly, after that, I didn't really get an offer from Machinima to go to E3 again. And I'm sure I could have if I really hounded the fuck out of them, possibly gotten there. But the bottom line is, since 2012, I really haven't had much opportunity to do anything. Like, you know, I've been tight on money. 2013, I was saving to move. Last year, I moved. And now, I certainly don't have any money to do anything like that. So, I really don't care that I didn't get into E3 again. But the, the one time I got in was awesome, right? Um... <clears throat> And games. This past year, Machinima has provided me with tons of promotional copies of games. In fact, the past three months, I think I got about seven of them or eight of them. And these were all games that I was planning on going out and buying anyway, and they saved me the money. And let me tell you, in, in regards to some of these fucking games that were terrible, that were not worth 60 bucks, I am so glad that I did not have to pay for them because I would be so fucking pissed off. Yeah, he's not the casual okay. gamer. He's not the so common Machinima gamer. Machinima gives me okay. all these positives. What are the negatives of being with Machinima? Let's be honest here. Number one, Let's be honest. high turnover rate. What does that mean? It means that in the four and a half years, five wow. years now almost, that I've been wow. signed to Machinima, Let's be honest. the people here change all the time. The person who's your point of contact today will not be your point of contact in six months, will not be your point of contact in a year. There's high turnover rate. People are constantly moving around in positions in the company, leaving the company, joining the company. And the company's been restructured two times since I started with them in 2011. And they've had totally different initiatives. That's why I was going to E3 in 2012. They had different initiatives that year than they did in the next year and since then. So it's like, you know, you have opportunities sometimes, sometimes you don't. You won't have consistency in the people you're talking to there or even the method by which you try to get information from them. It could change on the fly. That's a negative. I would love to have one person who I know I can rely on all the time, and I've never had that with Machinima because the people are constantly fluctuating. That's honest, an honest answer right there, all right? But Number two, wait, the fact that they don't really involve me in much. And what I wait, I'm trying to follow along here. He said that they're that they keep changing, but they're consistent. But if they keep changing, that's not consistent. If they keep changing who who is working there, that's not consistent. That's like me saying, I'm very consistent with my work. I just don't work in between days or something like. I work I work you know, every day of the week consistently except for uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I don't work. That's not consistent. Consistent is I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I, I it just sounds weird. What are you saying? By that is I almost never been contacted by Machinima and said, Phil, would you like to do a crossover with this this YouTuber under Machinima? Phil, would you like to be involved in this special Machinima event? Phil, would you like to do this? I almost never get that. Never. Now, I don't know if other Machinima partners get that. I don't. So maybe for whatever reason, I'm on the blacklist, but I just never get involved in that stuff. I never get told about stuff, special you know, opportunities of collaboration or any kind of thing that has to do with Machinima. I don't get involved. I don't get, you know, there's no Machinima conference where all the big YouTubers under Machinima come and meet up or meet and greet. Nothing like that. So, you know what I mean? I'm kind of, like I said, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I do feel like I'm on an island on YouTube. I do my own thing. Everyone else does their shit around me, but I just exist mm -hmm. on my own, and I'm still here after years and years of doing it. I don't really get involved in other people. Other people don't get involved in my shit, right? And, you know, if Machinima, there's maybe other partnership companies that are much different, and they try to do the crossovers and everything, and they try to orchestrate all that. Machinima doesn't. And that's, I think, a negative. I honestly think that all the years, all the people that came in and out of Machinima, if I had crossovers and stuff with those people, networking, branching out, it would have been a great opportunity. And it was a lost opportunity because Machinima never orchestrated any of that stuff. And I've told them this before, by the way. Two times in the past four years I've told them this. And by the way, every time I told someone, that guy left his position or left his position within a few months and then it went by the wayside. Okay? The biggest thing by far that pisses me off about Machinima is that when these contract renegotiations come up, they don't warn anybody. 
I didn't get a forewarning two months ago saying, oh, by the way, it's the end of 2015 and we'll be reviewing everyone's contract again. And you've been red flagged this year as a contract that may need to be renegotiated. No, it just fucking hits you like that. And now I'm supposed to like change my entire business and life in 10 days. This happened twice. This happened at the end of 2012, same exact situation. And it's like they didn't learn from then that apparently just doing that is messed up. And it, they did it again. Now, in this case, they actually made concessions for me, right, so that I could take my time and decide what's best for me. But that's ridiculous. That's a real negative criticism of machinima. You should give people way more time to make fucking life-changing decisions. Yeah, it's YouTube. Companies fire people. Every day, and those people don't know they get they're gonna get fired. So Machinima is like a normal business then, because people lose their jobs every day, and they might not know why they lose their jobs. They might not see it coming. They might. He he even said so with his old job that he used to work at. He got laid off or something without warning. So why would Machinima be any different if this is a business? Okay, I understand that, but. It's serious business. Sorry, it is. It's my life. It's my business. What other business are you forced to attend 10 days to make a fucking critical decision that's going to change your life? So, I don't like that. I wish there was more transparency and communication between Machinima and myself, and I'm sure all the other partners are probably going to agree with me, all right? Yeah, but I'll tell you are. this. All the negative shit that I hear about Machinima in these videos that I hear, the drama, the drama bullshit that I hear all over the internet and people complaining, I, here's what I hear, the most common complaints about Machinima. They force you into really long-term contracts. Like some people upwards of seven years, four years, and you can't get out of them. They've never done that to me ever. When I signed with them in 2011, it was a two-year contract. At the end of 2012, they renegotiated and said one year. And since then, I've always been in a one-year contract. Right now, I'm in a two-month contract. So I don't know where these long contracts are coming from or why the hell anyone would ever agree to one. Like, are you out of your mind? A seven-fucking-year contract? I actually heard some people originally... Way back when, when these partnership companies were first signing, signed in perpetuity contracts. You know what that means? It means that a company owns your channel forever, and you have no legal right to fucking get out of it. That's insanity. I would never sign a contract like that. That's stupidity. And what I really think, on my wow. honest opinion, I think a lot wow. of YouTubers, when they see that other... Wow. Calling people stupid for signing contracts. I mean, they should at least read the contract and think about what they're selling, what they're signing. But some people are like, well, I need to sign this because, it, you know, they might be stuck in a tough position and they might have to, they might sign it because of that. I mean, like, when Kojima signed out, signed with uh, Konami, was he thinking about, oh, I might get my um, contract terminated in December 15, 2015, so maybe I shouldn't sign with them. No. Because a lot of these people who sign these contracts don't think in the long term. Which is a lot of people. I mean, Phil doesn't. I mean, Phil's one of these people who don't think in the long term, um, and he's calling these people stupid. You know, he, fair enough. I'm calling him an idiot, but he, but he is like throwing himself in danger and then not doing anything to help him. I mean, he could have gotten a job as a, you know, as a safety net, but he's not doing that. He, you know, if I was in his position, I would have had a job. I, I would have, maybe I wouldn't have a job right now, but I would have at least tried to get a job. Regardless, just saying. YouTubers oh. are making money. Oh, there's someone over there that's doing gaming and they're making a living. I want to do that too. And they rush out for the first offer. Oh, I heard Machinima is a big company. Oh, here's a contract. And instead of actually looking to see what's out there and playing the field and doing their due diligence, they just sign right on the fucking dotted line, like totally ignorant of what they're signing, right? They don't read. Some people are just they're saying that they were in contracts that were like 60 40 revenue share. That's terrible. That means that you keep 60% of the ad revenue from your channel and your partnership network keeps 40%. That's really fucking bad. Let me tell you right now, that's really bad. That's one of the worst fucking arrangements. If you're in a 60-40 revenue share contract right now on YouTube, you need to get the fuck out of there because you fucked up when you signed that contract. Everyone has a better contract than you, all right? So this is what I mean. Like all the negative things I always hear about Machinima, I hear three things. My contract's too long, they won't let me out. My terms suck, they won't improve them or they won't let me out. Or I don't get any answer from them, all right? I've never had a contract offered for me longer than a year since I was renegotiated in 2012. I've never had an issue with revenue share or anything like that. My terms have always oh been God. really lucrative. This is like, this is exactly like, okay, Stephen Colbert reference right here. If you've seen the Colbert Report, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, if I'm hungry, 
and I eat a sandwich and something, and then I say to myself, I cured world hungry hunger because I, I'm not hungry anymore. He is just saying that, well, these people have shitty, shitty um, experiences with Mishima. I didn't, so these people are idiots, and they don't know what they're talking about, but since I've never had these issues, Mishima is great, and they're a saint, and these people, and it's and it's their fault. It's these other people's fault. It's not Mashinima's fault that they that they're the ones that wrote the contract. No, no, it's not their fault. They're just trying to take advantage of everyone. But it's these people who signed it. I mean, granted, it it it, it is. You do, you are responsible for reading these contracts that they that they give you. That is that is true. You 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 have you do need to do you do need you do need to read the contract. But if you exhausted all. Like, like, look at my channel. Who's gonna partner my my main channel? Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people will partner my main channel. Would want to jump at the opportunity to to, uh, to partner Theo does videos. No one wants to do that. But I understand that. <sighs> Whatever. Of terms from Machinima, and I always get a response from them. So people saying to me in the past few days, Phil, we really hope you don't sign again with Machinima because we heard all this negative stuff. That's not the experience I've ever had with this company. Regardless of the fact that the people who I talk to are different every couple years or every year, I always have a good experience with them. Like, I've never had an experience where I was told, fuck you, no, make a decision or get the fuck out or nothing like that. Never. Always I've been giving leeway. I've been given special, you know, a special circumstance, extra help with copyright issues. Like, I don't understand why people have such an issue with this company when, to me, they've been nothing but willing to work with me since day one, you know? My success on YouTube is because of my hard-earned work and Machinima's work, backing okay. of me in a lot of ways. That's why I've been here. So for people to say, oh, Machinima's a terrible company and all that, the problem is the people who have great relationships with Machinima aren't going to fucking jump out there and make great videos about it because they're fine. When you're fine, you don't mention it. It's also like, like I said, Phil, you never mentioned views until uh, 2012. Oh, you mean when my views started to go down? That's right. Because you don't mention the negative until it happens. Why are you, you know what I mean? Why am I ever going to mention Machinima, right? Besides saying I'm grateful maybe once a year. I'm grateful to be with Machinima. They let me do my job and make money. Why would I ever be making big videos about it, right? And that's why. You don't ever hear the positives. You hear the negatives. And I hope this is a positive story that people will fucking spread about Machinima. I've never had a problem with these people. Uh. I don't know what's wrong with people that, like, they, they, they're all, oh, Machinima's the devil, terrible contracts. I've never once had a bad deal put in my lap by Machinima. I've never once been mistreated. I've never once had an issue. Yeah, there's a few communication issues when it comes to back and forth and timeliness and transparency a little bit, but never so... What? But he said that... Oh my god. He just said that he never had communication problems. Now he's saying that he has communication problems and transparency problems. This guy is like trying to make a shitty situation sound like a golden situation. And it's really... And it's really kind of shitty for him to shit on other people who, who partnered with Machinima who might have genuine problems. And then to say that, well, you don't listen to, to, to the negative stuff until it happens. And that's what I'm talking about views all the time. It's like, yeah, but you know, you shouldn't talk about views anyway. And, and your fans are asking you not to talk about views, but he doesn't, but he doesn't listen to fan feedback. Uh, this is to get this over with. My fucking business or my life. So I don't know how people, if, if anything, what it seems to me is that people have sour grapes. And what I mean by that is, again, oh, they saw those YouTube dollar signs, right? Oh my God. Dark side Phil's making money, making videos on YouTube. I got to get in on that too. So I've got a, a channel that's got, you know, a couple hundred, couple thousand subs, but it's growing rapidly. I'm going to sign. With, so, oh, I got a contract from someone. Fuck me doing due diligence and going out and looking at terms and things from other people. Sign on the dotted line. And then you get what's called buyer's remorse. You fucking went and went, jumped right into a deal before you were ready. And next thing you know, you could have got a better. Does he not know what sour grapes is? Do you not? A lot. Deal over here, you could have got a better deal over here, and you want more, and now you can't get out because you legally locked in, like a sap. Now, should companies be off? Wow, he called all those people saps, but he doesn't know what sour grapes is. He 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 probably understood like the last half of what sour grapes is. I'll tell you guys what sour grapes is. It's if you want is when you want something and you can't get it, 
So you say, oh, I don't need it. This, that thing was a piece of shit anyway. So if you if they, these people had uh, partnerships with Machinima and they wanted more and they wanted to go to a different company, they'll say that that company is a piece of shit. My kept, my partner is the best. So he, he totally misused uh, uh, the term sour grapes. This guy this guy claims his business degree and he and he claims he went to college. Yeah, okay. If you don't know what sour grapes is, I I that's like high school uh, psychology. I mean, again, he doesn't know what words mean. Bring these terrible contracts? No, I agree they shouldn't. Who the fuck should ever offer a seven year contract or a year sixty forty rev share? That's insanity. But I've never been offered a contract that bad. Maybe I'm the exception to the rule. My terms are good, and I have a good relationship with Machinima, and that's why I have no problem at this point re-signing with them for a month, seeing what happens in the month of January, right? Let's get, I want to get this new channel partnered with them. Let's see how that goes. If that new channel is successful, only a managed partnership, right? And we can play it all out. And worst case scenario, right, if I do re-sign, it's a year. It's only a year. It's only ever been a fucking year. I'm not locked in these guys in perpetuity, and I'm stuck with them forever. I Wait don't know a where second. Where all this nonsense comes from? If he saw, if they have to renegotiate every year or or whatever these these contracts are, then it's not out of the blue. Then he should have known this was happening. Then I I don't I don't get this oh, guy. Don't so that's my perspective. That's my update. Good positive news. DSP Gaming is resigned for now. It is much less money, but it's resigned with Machinima. Still a managed partnership. All right. That's going to go till the end of January, at which case we'll see how did things go in January with the new channels, the vlogging, DSP Gaming, and we decide if we're going to go into a longer-term contract and re-signing again. The new channel is in development. Send me your feedback on the names I should use for this channel. All right? Also, send keep in mind, I'm going to be needing things like logo, be Do it. logo for the channel once we pick the name and some artwork for the top of the channel. You know, the channel. Yeah, do all this stuff, then you can copy or you can strike it, and then... It's, it's, it could be like what happened when in uh, what happened early, oh, you know, sometime in the middle of the seeker. You could do that. Banner, I believe they call it. That's really all I need. I need a thumbnail. I need a channel banner, and that's all I need for the channel. You can't use banner. That's all no. I need. need. Channel banner, thumbnail, name, and you can get the channel going. Partnered immediately, right? And uh, you know, and we're, we're gravy from there. So contact me with that, with your feedback on that. And uh, hopefully it'll be partnered in t early 2016 and we'll go from there. So as of right now, things are good. I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Things wow. will progress forward positively. All kinds of new stuff is coming your way in regards to not just new gameplay, but we've got the year-end series, holiday specials, everything coming, and then we're going to roll right into the new stuff of 2016. Thank you for your ongoing support. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching this particular video as well. All right. So that's it, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When I have further updates for you on the new channel, I'll let you know. Please send me your feedback, and we'll go from there. All right? Peace out, everyone. Wow. See you later. Thanks for watching. Wow. What, what oh, a yeah. Happy holidays. Wow, that was like the last... Did you say, like... Updates for you on the new channel. I'll let you know. Please send me your feedback, and we'll go from there. All right? Peace out, everyone. See you later. Thanks for watching. And, oh, yeah. Happy holidays. <laughs> He said all the stuff that's about him, and then he was like, "Then the happy holidays thing was, the, was the P.S. I don't know that 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 that's nitpicky, but that's kind of shitty as well. Uh, I can't stand ending a video like this, like that. I'm in a bad mood. I don't know why I'm in a bad mood. Let's just go to my channel and let's find something that's that's gonna put me in a good mood. Um." Oh, I got, I got it. I got, the, I got an idea. We're gonna watch. I pulled a victory. There you go. We'll do this. I, I'm Eliza, obviously. Obviously. Gentlemen and ladies, it's time to fight! What? I was blocking! Wow, 
And I didn't think I was gonna lose this one. I mean, I, I before losing the title, so I'm sorry, but. Oh, That's it. That's that's a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed everything about it. So um, that's the end. See you guys next.